now that we've combined the maps that we needed to, we've generated the other maps that, that we had to, now it's time to jump into Substance Painter. Now this is the third application we are jumping into, however, this is kind of the workflow to get the best results and to keep things as modular as possible. And if you need to redo something, we want to make sure that you can do it without having to touch every single part of your project, your mesh, your UV, and everything else. Now, the question is, is why am I using Substance Painter when Substance Designer can do the same exact things? Well, there's a few points where I'm going to want to actually paint onto the map, and I'd rather paint onto it than use a procedural generator. So I think Substance Designer is better for generating procedural content, whereas Substance Painter allows you to still do the procedural content, but gives you the finesse of a painterly touch. So I'm going to go ahead and just import all my assets. I'm going to start off by click, clicking Select and choosing our mesh. One of the things I love the most about Painter is you're choosing your document resolution. But the reality is, is that when you actually use Painter, Painter is really saving your brush strokes and not the actual data itself. So it can scale to 2048 or 4 or back down and maintain the exact same resolution. So that's another one of those benefits. There are actually a few programs out there because this is going to be a trend. Uh, the founder just picked up something called Mischief, which is something that I'll show you in some later videos. And that's another one that allows you to mimic, you know, being able to, to scale up and down without degrading quality. So that's something that you're going to see a lot of. So, but we know it's 2048, so I'm going to send it to 2048. And now it's time to just add all of our maps. Now, you don't have to add them all here. You can actually add them in later. But while we're here, I'll just add them all in now. All right, so now we have our maps. You can see here in our textures. Uh, I ended up not combining everything, but just getting enough done so that we can come into here. So the first thing I like to do is really set up our scene and look at it at its base structure. So I'm just going to align this somewhere I like. And the first thing I want to do is add a normal map. Now, by using this additional maps area, what this will allow is, is when we start painting and creating layers, it'll automatically target the exact map it needs. So it's important that you add the correct maps in here. So let's start with the normal map. I think it's great to see what your normals look like first. So once we put it in, you can see that this gets automatically updated, which is awesome, because then we can use them simultaneously. So now we have our normal map in here we can kind of get a feel for what this is going to look like. Now after the normal map, I like to like the I like to add the ambient inclusion. So let's grab the AO map. You saw me drag and drop it in there. You don't have to drag and drop. You can actually do you can actually select here and you'll see them here. Uh, so then AO gets dropped in here. We can choose our map IDs, which you're not gonna see any any update right now because they have no um, they're not actually being used for anything. But then we can use our curvature map, which I know is that. And once again, these are all for when we start generating things. Now, we do have the position, and we do have uh, world space. Actually, I have to import world space. But when, when we need them, I'll actually add them in there. Actually, let's just do them now and just get it over with. Cool. Now that they're in there... I'm not going to set them, actually, I'm going to set the world space for, let's just make sure this is world space. All right, this is the position map. So I'm just going to set the default position map for, uh, for most of the object and just hover over it and just make sure we have the right one, world map. The reason why I didn't combine them is because there were too many colors and there were, there was more of a headache than, than necessary combining the two. So for now, we'll just have them separate, but we can combine them if we take the time to do so. So now that we're at this stage, we can go ahead and do a few things. One, we can look at our panorama and kind of choose one that works the best for what we're trying to, uh, to actually model over or paint in this case, sorry. 
Now, I do have a, a massive list of HDRs that I can use outside of this, but since we're working in this, I want to keep it as neutral as possible. Uh, but you can import your own HDRs. Just trying to find one that I really like. You know what? I can rock with this one. All right, cool. So now that we have this in here, uh, let's get started. First thing I'm going to do is, is I'm going to create a new layer, and I'm going and everything here is going to be PBR, and this is going into Unity eventually. Uh, and Unity has been doing a great job of finally giving us a, a workflow that isn't uh, outside of what everyone else does. Uh, you know, and what I mean by that is, is Unity um, originally started doing PBRs and using uh, roughness um, in spec, spec maps, while everyone else is using gloss and roughness. So it, it ends up becoming a, a big headache later on. So you can now do the inverse and do it the way everybody else is doing it. So it's not confusing. I uh, spoke to some of them, and the reason for that was this. It actually was simple. Was is that it makes more sense when you when you think of it. But um, but it's it's a wordplay versus uh, you know standards. So what I did here is I created a fill layer, and our fill layer can now be if we want to. We can actually what we want to do is we we want to create a mask. So let's let's create a mask and. This is something new. Mask by, actually did that really quick. Mask with color selection. That's actually, like I said, it's relatively new. This just came out. Uh, and it allows us to now mask our area based off of um, our, our ID maps. And that's the reason why we needed our, our ID map. So now when we choose a color, we get to mask by color. And then we can add colors. So then we can mask both. So now you're not going to be able to see too well. But I can actually take this. Um, let me actually create a folder instead. Let's do this all in a folder because it'll actually be easier later on. And I'll get rid of this mask. And we'll, we'll just call this brass. And while I'm here, I'll just create another folder and call it body. Just so we can organize things. All right, so now we're going to do the same thing. Actually, first what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to choose what I want. Now, you can choose a metal. Uh, there's a long list of materials that I have access to here, and I'm going to use a gold. This is going to need some time to actually update, so that's why it's taking just a bit of time. Awesome, now it's actually updated. <laughs> um, so you can see this is already, well, it's not looking good. It's, it's, it's looking absolutely gorgeous. So as you can see, we have the reflections. We're seeing everything. This isn't the actual material we want, though. This, I believe, is closer to what we're looking for. Uh, you know, it's a, it's a metal gold. We don't really need this super, super reflective, um, you know, um, actual PBR or image or material. And we'll, we'll end up being able to, to add some imperfections in here. But the first thing we want to do is, is we want to go ahead and mask this thing out. So I'm going to do what we did before. Come here, right click, and mask by color. And once again, this is absolutely a time saver. Uh, before, you know, it was kind of like playing around and trying to mask things out manually. But this is why you want to create your UVs and you want to do everything correctly. Because look how simple that was now to just isolate that area. Now, we have a few other ones that we can add. Let's add another fill layer. Uh, I'm just in the mood of, you know, just doing everything all at once. And we're going to add wood. Because we know this section and this section is going to be made up of wood. So once again, come here and we're going to get wood. Well, this is one thing I hate. You start typing and then all of a sudden it doesn't recognize. So once again, we're just going to let this, because I'm also recording, it's having a tougher time, uh, you know, processing all of this. And I have an obscene amount of <laughs> resources. Uh, but, you know, you, you do this long enough, you know, you, you just start mounting a lot of resources. And it just makes things easier uh, later down the road. So, right now, these are these are looking more like tree bark. And, yeah, the, this isn't what we want. What, we, what I like is, I think I like this as a base. I think this is a nice base that we can start off with. And what we're going to do here is, is because we're using just the wood portion, we're going to also mask it out. Once again, just keep masking things out. Uh, choose a color. 
and choose a color. And now, as you can see, we are we are very much so on our way. Now, this is something that <clears throat> I won't call it an oversight, but it's definitely something that uh, I need to fix, and it's that we don't actually have this part masked out correctly. So we'll have to actually manually go in, which I actually dread doing that. So I'll probably go into Illustrator and take this SVG and, uh, you know, create a nice little um, selection here so we don't have to do it um, within Painter because that's really difficult to do. But in the meantime, we're just going to go ahead and add another fill layer. And this one we're going to call Cloth. Actually, I think it's, I have a fabric. It's always nice to start off with a base so that you're not always starting from, from zero because at the end of the day, it's always about how quick you can and effectively you can get these things done. So we have a few fabric choices that we can work with. Uh, I like this, the cotton fabric, because it's, it's really just a nice base fabric that you can just get started with and not worry. So, same thing as before, we just mask everything around. And I know this time it's just that area. I actually made a mistake. This isn't being masked out, but that's fine. We can just come in here and go to a selection. And which one is it? Oh, it's just, there you go. Now we have everything in here. And as you can see already, this is already looking nice. Uh, you know, we can now go back and work out each section and do a little tweaking to our, our base fill layer to get some, some really nice quality, uh, you know, uh, meshes or, or textures. I'm going to go ahead and play around with this some and make some changes. And then in the next video, I'll show you and recap some of the overall changes I made because this is going to end up becoming very tedious. So see you in the next video.